Hey guys, welcome back. This is Tavis, and I'm going to do a quick tutorial on how to create an action with your dynamic symmetry grids. So once you download it, it's going to be in your downloaded folder. Just go ahead and move it to the desktop. And just do this because some people are having issues with extracting the files. So just to make sure, this seems to fix the little problem. So drag it to your desktop. Now double click. This will unzip or extract the files. So now we have the folder. We can just click in there. And the grids we're looking for, since we're on the computer, we're going to go to computer grids. And these are used for analyzing masterworks or digital art or creating just a, a rough sketch, if you like. And we can do it to design a photo or anything like that. The difference between these is JPEG and TIFF. TIFF has the transparent background. So if you're working in Photoshop, these are the best option to start using. We've got white grids and black grids with the transparent background. And then the JPEGs, same thing, depending on what software you're using, we're going to have a black grid with a white background. But to get this background transparent, I'm going to show you how to do that. So I've got something already set up. I'm going to show you how to create your own actions with the dynamic symmetry grids really easy. One way people do this is just drag the grid on top of the picture. That's one easy way. So let's do the TIFF file, which is going to have a clear background. I'm going to choose a white grid with a clear background. And you can just drag it on there and it's gonna be a smart object. Smart object just means it's non-destructive. So I'm gonna drag it up and that's my root too. But I wanna create actions, so I'm gonna get rid of this. And this is your action button, so just go ahead and click on there and we're gonna create a new set. So click this folder down here and we're gonna call it, well I have composition actions, but you can name it whatever you want. I'm gonna name it grid tutorial. Alright, so that's our set and now we want to create a new action to place the dynamic symmetry grid. And let's create a new action and we're going to name this root 2 and it's the basic armature. So I'm just going to put that and then I'm going to place it. So we go up to file, place embedded and then we're going to find wherever we put our dynamic symmetry grids. If they're on your desktop, just go to the desktop or before you do this Relocate your dynamic symmetry grids to a folder that you prefer and then go to that folder. So let's do this one, white with clear background. Do that one, push place. And right now we can resize or we can just leave it as it is. But whatever moves we make, it's going to start recording here. So usually I just, to be like a generic, good for every piece of art that I analyze or composition study, I'm going to just stretch it out to the sides and then push the check mark. So that placed it. And now that's basically all we have to do. And we just push stop. So that's basically just placing it. And now if we delete it, we go up here, push play. It's going to place it and it's going to stretch it out to the sides. So it did everything we just did. Sometimes I like to analyze paintings with a black under layer. So we can record that too, but we have to be kind of specific in our actions because it's gonna start recording here. We're gonna go back in here and we're gonna push record, go down here. It doesn't matter if you're here and you push record or if you go open it up and you push there and record. But it's gonna record wherever you place this cursor if the folder's open. So let's push record and I'm going to tell it which layer I want to record here. That way it knows when we close this out and come back to it, it knows which layer to produce the new layer above. So I'm going to go like this and it says select layer background. Whatever image is open, it's always going to select the background layer. Then I'm going to push the new layer button and then I'm going to fill this with black. Push D because that's going to reset these swatches. Say I have red over here, right? This is all recording in the action. But say I have red over here and I want to select black and I want to fill this new layer right here with black, but this has red, so I'm just going to push D. And that's going to reset the swatches. And then I'm going to push Option and Delete. And that's, if you look at your keyboard, this is Option. Options on the left, commands on the right. So option, command. So whatever color is here, hold option, push delete, and it's going to fill 
with that color. So if I wanted it filled with white, I'd push Command Delete. So I'm going to push Option Delete again, and you can see how this is all recording. So I'm going to stop that, and I'm going to show you how you can delete some of this stuff if you didn't want to record it. So delete this, delete this also, and let's start fresh. I'm going to delete this. All right, and delete this. Okay, so we have our grid, and we want to place a layer on top of this background layer, above this. So we're going to start record, and right now the computer doesn't know which layer we're on, so we're going to tell it which layer we're on. We're going to jump off of background, select this one. Now we're going to go back to this one, see, select background, and we're going to create the new layer and we're going to record no matter what color we have in this swatch we're going to record it in here as resetting the swatches so we're going to push D reset swatches see it's recorded now we're going to push option delete and then to set the opacity we're going to push V and V is going to select our selection tool up here so we want to push V and then we want to change the opacity to 30 percent so we'll just push V and then we'll push the number three and it records that opacity 30 percent and that's good let's stop that so that's our action for that now let's delete it and see how we did and push play all right so now we have our black layer which is making the grid stand out a little bit say we wanted to create an action that had the portrait format instead of the landscape right here this is landscape so what if we wanted to turn it like this well, let's just include that in our action, but let's create a new one if you want. So I'll show you how to do that. Let me delete these. So we'll just drag this. This is the action we just created. Let's drag it down to this new action button and it's gonna duplicate it. Now let's just rename this portrait. Okay, we're gonna push play. And now we're gonna start recording and make sure we tell the recording which layer to select. So we're gonna select this one. Okay, and then we're going to hit Command T, or you can go up here in the Edit menu, but Command T, and we're going to hold Shift while we turn it, and then we're going to hold Shift and Alt, or Option, when we stretch it and resize it. So then push OK, and now it's resized, and then we can push Stop. So let's delete these, and go back up here, push Play, and we can see that it works. All right. So that's that part. Let's go in here and let me delete these. And we're going to show you how to just use the JPEG ones, the JPEG files if you want. So just push another new action, name it. So I'm going to name it this. And we're going to go up here again, file, place, embedded. And we're going to go to the JPEG file. And let me choose, let's see, I like the white one with the black background again. So let me push place. And if we want to record it with the landscape or portrait, we can just to make sure that you know which one you want to do. I'm just going to stretch it out because this is going to be my generic placement. We're still recording, so we placed it. Now I want to select the blending mode so I can go in here and put it on screen. And that's going to get rid of the black and just show the white. So now I'm still recording and I want to place that black layer underneath again. So I'm going to select, tell it which layer to select. I'm going to select background, create this new layer, and then fill it with black. And remember what I did? I pushed D for default colors. So I reset the swatches right here. And now option is on the left, command is on the right. So I'm going to put option, delete, and it's going to fill it with black. And then I'm going to change the opacity, and the shortcut for that is to select V first, just in case it's not selected. And then I'm going to push 3 for opacity of 3. So then it goes down to that. So say I just changed my mind and I want to make the portrait grid instead of this landscape one. So I'm going to actually tell it again which layer I want it to be aware of. So it's going to select layer 2, and then I'm going to push Command T turn it around, holding shift, and then I'm going to expand it by holding shift and alt, and push OK. So that's our action. Now we can stop it. Let me delete these and see if it worked. So root 2, white JPEG. 
See how it added it into this folder? This is an action set. I don't want it in that action set. I want it in this one. So I'm going to just drag it down, close this one up. So this is the JPEG, but it's also a portrait. So I'm just going to get rid of this and I'm going to put root two just for demonstration purposes. So let me push play again and see how that works. And it's perfect. So it works. Say you decide you like a black grid better. We're just going to select this, start recording. We're going to tell it which layer to select. Right now we're on the layer that we need to be on. So we need to get off that layer so it records where we are. So we're going to tell it to go here and then we're going to tell it to go here. And now it knows where, which layer we want to affect. So now to convert it to black, all we have to do is push command I and it's going to inverse the colors. So now we have black lines and white background, but now you can see it's all messed up. All we have to do is select our blending mode as multiply. And now you can see that, but wait a sec, this is too dark now. So all we have to do is select that and command I and it's going to inverse and then say this isn't still isn't visible enough. We're going to increase the opacity. So all we have to do for the shortcut is select V and then we're going to put maybe 50%. So push five and now we can see it a little better. So now let's push stop and we can see what we did. Now I'm going to name this. I'm going to put black. All right. So push play and there we go. Now we have the black grid with a whiter background so we can see it better and we're ready to analyze Bougereau's masterpiece. So you get all these actions set up and you want to just make it quicker instead of pushing this and then pushing play and then, then pushing this and then pushing play. All you have to do is go up here and go to button mode and it's going to convert all these separate actions into buttons. So now all we have to do is this is the action we just created so we're just going to push the button and it's going to roll the button. Another inside tip is sometimes actions get really, really long and take forever to play. So what we want to do is go into here, take off this button mode, and we're going to be sure we click on one of these. And we're going to go into the menu up here and then click on playback options. And I always choose this accelerator one because some of the toning actions that I have take forever if you use the step by step. So step by step is going to just run through each step pretty slow and show you what it's doing. And then you can also set the pause for however many seconds you want. But choose the accelerator one if you want the quickest action possible. Okay, so we've got all these actions made. We just made all these actions. Now we definitely want to make sure we save these and especially if we want to share them with friends or whatever, we need to save them somehow. So we're on this action set. So we're going to go in our menu again and we're going to push save actions. And right now, usually you can go into your application if you want and you can select Adobe Photoshop. Let's see right down here. And then you can put presets and then you can select actions right here. And then these are all the generic actions they have, but you can save yours in there. I actually go, I save mine on the desktop, but I'm going to show you how to save it wherever you want. So let's just go back to the desktop and we're going to select the folder that I created for this tutorial and we're going to save it in there. So you can name it whatever you want, but I'm just going to keep it as is and push save. And we're going to show you what the file looks like. So the file looks like this. It's going to have an ATN extension, but the file kind of looks like that. And you can move it around wherever you want, email it, share it with friends, whatever. But if you share it with friends, they're going to have to have these files in order for it to work. See, because we only have six kilobytes of information, that's just the directions that were recorded. It's not the actual files that we're placing. We want to make sure we include the grids with our action and keep them in a location that you can easily find. So thanks for joining in. Thumbs up if you like this, if you want to see more and let me know in the comments below if you like it and if you have any other ideas that might help you out with your masterpieces. All right, take care guys. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it. And everything you guys do creates a positive environment for me to create more content for you guys. And I love doing it. So thank you so much. I appreciate it.